The sudo command is a common Linux shell command that lets you run apps, tools, and utilities with root or super user security privileges. Sudo means super user do on Linux and is probably the most famous of Linux commands. Yeah. What Linux user hasn't heard of sudo? Well, we have a lot of new people in our audience who, who may not know that term. Yep. And sure. there's even, maybe we have a few advanced uh, users who have never used it before. We just play it. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, no. It's I don't, possible, don't, Michael. I don't it's, think so. It's theoretically yeah. <laughs> possible. But she said advanced users. Yeah, like, you may be advanced and just use a GUI. You're just yeah. a GUI. You're a yeah. GUI kitty. I suppose, it's I, suppose it's, I guess it's possible. Okay. What's neat about Linux these yeah. days that blows our mind is the fact that you can actually just stay in the GUI the entire time and yes. accomplish yeah. everything. That's true. I was, I guess it's just like what I was just wondering, like the de definition of advanced in that sense. Yeah. But yeah, I guess you could be like a very high, high end, high tech savvy person and you still just use the GUIs. I mean, you totally can these days for sure. Yeah. 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 So, well, there is actually big news regarding sudo for Ubuntu users. And with Ubuntu 25.10 questing Quaka, greatest code name ever, <laughs> which is coming out in October, uh, actually will be using a Rust based alternative, sudo rs, mm. for privileged escalation instead of the traditional sudo, which is written in C. First of all, I hope you do not have to type out sudo rs or dash rs. It's just sudo still. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I haven't looked into this in, to see if like that's actually how it's well, going to be. I guess you could yeah. just imagine. do a, uh, I imagine alias. too. Yeah. I imagine alias. it imagine it'll still be just sudo though, because if they're probably going to have to replace it anyway. So. Yeah. So sudo rs is a memory safe version of sudo and su, which you know aims to improve security and eliminate memory safety vulnerabilities. Some of the benefits of sudo-rs include a more modern code base, improved error handling, focus on long-term maintenance, and better security because of the use of Rust, which is a memory-safe language. It's one of the reasons why so many of, of the um, functions in the Linux kernel, kernel are going to be coming to us with Rust. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting because it's been a little bit of a battle between the C and the Rust people that we've been yeah. covering, you know, within the, the kernel itself. There's been but some drama. A yeah. little bit of drama, which I bit. think is natural, right? I mean, you've got some incredible coders of C, which is just a very, very impressive language and things you can do with it. And then you've got this kind of new wave of Rust people coming in. And they're trying to, you got to try to figure out like which parts are we going to replace with Rust and keep and see and not yeah. break stuff at the same time. I mean, Rust is really good because of the, you know, not having the memory related errors and things like null pointer crashes or buffer overflows. And in fact, mm -hmm. this week there is a, you know, bunch of news articles about a kind of overflow situation allowing uh, memory overflow in Linux issue allowing for people to get hashed passwords. Mm -hmm. And so because I mean, of these type of things, Rust is a really impressive language to use because it has very strict rules about data protection and who owns data and who can see data and um, error handling and those type of things, making it very reliable. C is very good too. It's not but, like it's a bad language. It's just Rust is kind of I think Rust fits a lot of what we want in Linux. When Rust is more security. modern in the sense of like, yeah. you know, the yeah. reason why it's memory safe in comparison to C is because C was made many, many decades ago. Yeah. And that, you know, when a new language, C, you, the when languages come out, they can work on top of like what existed and be able to learn from it and that sort of stuff. And that's why Rust is uh, in better in that sense of the, the memory safety aspects. Uh, but just real quick, Ryan talked about the whole uh, hash password memory core dump sort of thing. Uh, that is very difficult to do. I feel like we can't just kind of like glaze over that part. Oh, that's a fair point. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 a thing that's happening, and you're going to see a lot of people like make articles about it because when something happens on Linux, they're always super excited to talk about the security issue in Linux, even though it is the the barrier to use that thing is so high. 
it is almost guaranteed no one's going to have ability to well, do that. It's already been patched too. So. Yeah, and it's been patched and all that sort of stuff. So you will see see people uh, talking about it and overreacting and that sort of stuff. But in, well, whereas in comparison of Windows, it's literally every day, and you know, it's just you so know, it's just a normal like, thing. Well, I talk about it, you know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, in fact, there are some really righteous hacks out there happening today on Windows and Mac OS uh, that are very similar of stealing hashed information, so encrypted information. So I think what you're seeing too is a lot of governments are attacking each other. And what happens is you can only use these tools once before they're out in the open. And so you're seeing very sophisticated tools likely because of AI and governments not getting along in their five by five sandbox with one shovel. And this is causing when they use these attacks against each other, that hack is now out there in the wild. And then eventually it makes its way into, you know, hacker into, you know, groups and other things that utilize these tools. So you see these sophistication, ha sophisticated hacks, and then, uh, you know, they get patched once they're out there. I think the sad thing is a lot of these governments know there are some vulnerabilities in Windows, Mac OS, Android, whatever it is, and they don't report them so they can keep their little hidden you know, oh, I mean, attack I'm, I'm, kit open. To, <laughs> I would be yeah. incredibly shocked if that wasn't the case. Oh yeah, we know it's the case. It's actually several of these type of zero day hacks that governments have used have been things where there was known vulnerabilities that they kept from software companies that they were supposedly partnered with that they knew existed but didn't tell them, and it, and it kind of sucks because I mean they're partnered to get the information exactly. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. Let's talk about Rust and Sudo. Oh, yeah. 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 Sorry, Jill. Uh, Rust and Sudo. Happy news. Happy news. Happy news. Is it, though, because of the drama? What about all Aww. the rust rustification of the platform? And everybody's so mad about that. And and then they're now Sudo is being replaced with Rust. When is it going to end, people? Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Good point, Michael. Well, a bunch of... I feel like I was of, channeling some yeah. drama there. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Ubuntu is kind of the first distro to really, you know, take it on and yeah. include this. And uh, sudo dash rs is is it's not expected to bring over all the features of sudo as the developers are really kind of taking a less is more approach. But don't worry, classic sudo will be around for the foreseeable future. But sudo dash rs will be the default. So I think all you will have to do is type sudo, but I'm not sure because then what would they call the original sudo? The classic. Sudo C? You have to type classic sudo. <laughs> Thanks. Something like that. Pseudo classic, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, so it'll still be around, but I don't think it's going to be like installed. I feel like they're going to have it in their repos and you can switch to it if you want to. But uh, yeah, I, I would imagine that they wouldn't change because of all the things to change, the mechanism to do something that is so fundamental to exactly. this yeah. basically using the command line is... You mean changing the command line itself to something different? Yeah. Like to, mean, to, yeah. It should be, be pseudo vintage idea. to launch the vintage version <laughs> and then... Pseudo new, pseudo the vintage, new pseudo legacy. I like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, both both like those that. be good. I like that. Pseudo classic is is that's that's not enough. We need to give more prestige to the C pseudo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, you know, it's kind of like uh, it, it 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 was. There was definitely a learning curve when we moved over to apt instead of saying apt get install. <laughs> It was apt I still install. do apt get install. You know? it's still like <laughs> me too, because yeah. I just forget sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. This, this is a great point because if they do change the command in the structure, that would be such a problematic thing because of the whole apt issue that you are talking yeah. about. Yeah. That happened in 2014. Yeah. So when they switched uh -huh. over from apt get to apt. That's so when I was true, 12. Michael. I was 12 in 2014. That's crazy to think about. Wow. Sure, buddy. Sure. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, uh, Michael and Ryan, I was uh, here's a question. I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Fedora, Debian, or OpenSUSE switch to sudo dash rs soon for better security. Who what do makes you guys think? sudo rs? <laughs> who I makes think. sudo rs? Let's ask our AI chat. Yeah. Yes, AI uh, chat, as in the live chat that were on Twitch and YouTube. Do y'all know who makes sudo dash rs? Yeah, that would be AI very patron helpful. Room will tell yeah, us yeah, yeah. Also, the AI patron room for sure. Because I know you can install it now. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, pseudo old. Nope, nope. Nobody's. Come on, pseudo AI chat. Get better. Oh. You're like Siri over here. Where's our answer? Jeez. <laughs> no pressure or anything. Ask. We're asking. We're asking you on the spot with zero our, <laughs> warning. Our whatsoever. patrons are worse than Siri. This is uh, unbelievable. Nothing's worse than <laughs> Siri. <laughs> Nothing's worse. <laughs> um, so uh, whether they will Fedora, Debbie, and OpenSUSE, will they switch? Uh, I think time will tell if there's some known, like, I don't know. I haven't seen anything about this until now. Is there any known issues, bugs? Are they doing it too early? Are all the commands covered? All of these things, if that, those are in check, I think Fedora probably would. Debian, no. Uh, not for another 25 years and open to. So yes, uh, yeah. pretty, pretty likely. Well, well, I did find the the GitHub and it's put out by trifecta tech foundation. That sounds yeah. like a hacking organization. It kind and of they does. show you how to install it and in, install it in Ubuntu, Debian and Fedora DNF installs pseudo dash RS and, an arch Pac-Man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, tack ass. <laughs> I don't I don't have any <laughs> you know, I don't have any skin in this game. Like whatever you all experts decide to switch over to, um, I'm good with. Yeah. So first of all, I think that uh, we can't really find the inf- the answer because it's not quickly accessible, but we do know that if if these distributions are going to be switching to it, it's going to be probably because that they are, you know, functionally working well. Uh, maybe in the sense of Ubuntu, they might be testing it. If they release it within the net with the next LTS, that will be a very strong sign that they're committed to it. Uh, but if it's just this one testing period, because that's what sometimes what Ubuntu does is they'll yeah. do they'll do something because if you don't know, the interim releases only have nine months of support. So mm-hmm. they really use it like a lot of the times they're using it for testing to see if it's uh, if they try something and if it works out really well, they'll they'll keep it going. And if it doesn't work, they'll chop it off right before they do the LTS. I can't sort of think of Tyler in our patron room makes a good point. Like I can't think of a time where Ubuntu really did some like cutting edge testing thing. That's usually like Fedora that does that, not Ubuntu. So they obviously feel like it's very stable. I mean, cause Ubuntu is yeah. known for, you know, being a little bit more, but, um, I mean, they are, they have stuff. tested things before in the sense of like they did Wayland gnome and back in 2017, for a one release to test to see if it was good. And then they dropped it, but right before the LTS. <laughs> They're so like, never mind, that won't work. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's quite possible that they are doing this as a test. We don't know for sure because there's not enough information about that. But I do think it's interesting. And also for those who are new to Linux and you're just learning about what sudo is, I did make a video about the five, uh, five commands that every Linux user should know. And in that video, sudo is in there. So that might be something so to check out. So you can't know until you watch his video. And you can't you know what won't the other understand what he's talking about unless you hit the thumbs up. And if you want to hold on to the information for more than 30 days, you have to become a patron. That's, That's how it works. All and that. to do that, all you got to do is tuxedo.com slash membership and you become a patron. And that way you can like keep the information in your head. Otherwise, it just kind of has a memory leak because it's not based on it's rust. A buffer overflow. Exactly. <laughs> all right. 